Hi friends, welcome to our channel. Welcome to another new video. Today, one of my friend, Sayan Sarkar, is going to share his interview experience of IIC Bangalore. IIC Bangalore is one of the oldest science institute in India. Currently, it is situated in Bangalore. So, let's see uh, what courses are offered by IIC. First of all, IIC offered uh, six years integrated PhD course and five years PhD course. Today, in this video, I will talk only about integrated PhD course. So, what are the eligibility criteria? The eligibility criteria is your jam rank should be one to seventy, and you have to qualify just. If your rank is under 100, then there is a high probability that they will call you for an interview. Before start the video, please like our videos and subscribe our channel. That will motivate us to make such kind of videos. Now let's start. Hello, I am Sayan Sarkar. Today I am gonna share my interview experience at IISC Bangalore. I got this opportunity to give the interview at IISC through my IIT exam result. The first thing they asked me there was to give a pref uh, or prefer a topic. I chose quantum mechanics for that one. Uh, the first question they asked me uh, is what is the uh, what is the wave function of a free particle that is well known that is e to the power ikx and they also said me to plot that one i also plotted the real part of the uh, real part of e to the power ikx that is the cos kx now they asked me a very good question that is like this one assume there is a step potential v0 ux ux is the actually the step uh, step function and where v0 is smaller than e uh, and how the waveform now looks in all the ranges for x uh, the whole picture that i uh, that i do in the interview was this yes. we can see uh, two portions of the wave function that is in the region x smaller than 0 and in the region x greater than 0 so the main difference is to, uh, main difference we have to have to check here uh, is that the wave difference in the wavelengths we can see here the wavelength of the uh, left hand side part is lambda 1 and the right hand side part is lambda 2 and there is also two waveforms present uh, present there so uh, also uh, also uh, you can see uh, and uh, see there is a uh, the wave functions are different in the both cases because the wavelength is different but both of them are sinusoidal right uh, they are uh, they can be found by solving this equation that is the uh, Schrodinger's equation uh, the for the left hand side this v will be actually zero and for the right hand side it will be v zero v0 and by solving them uh, we will get two solutions for the left hand side we will get e to the power I, uh, ik1x and for the right hand side we will get e to the power ik2x now we know that k1 will be root over 2me by 2me by h cut square and k2 will be root over 2me minus v0 by h cut square we can definitely see that k2 is smaller than k1 and so uh, and lambda or the wavelength is defined as 2 pi by k and as k1 is greater than k2 uh, lambda 1 will be smaller than lambda 2 and so we have drawn this picture like this one we can see lambda 1 is smaller than lambda 2 in the picture also also we can see that trans uh, the incident wave has the highest amplitude and if we take it as 1 we can uh, we can say the Amplitude of the uh, amplitude of the transmitted wave and the uh, reflected wave have smaller amplitudes. Uh, amplitudes and the reflected wave has uh, have the negative uh, negative amplitude, or we can say the negative phase uh, compared to the incident wave. That was the first question. 
now they ask me this one what happened to the particle does uh, does it break down into two pieces the it was actually a very conceptual question and we can uh, we can say very cleverly that uh, cleverly that uh, the particle never breaks the the thing that breaks is psi and psi is actually the probability uh, probability of finding the particle in the in the region whole region of x not exactly the psi that is the size uh, the exact thing is size square but for the convenience we can say uh, the probability of finding the particle is divided into the two regions that is x smaller than 0 and x greater than 0 but it does not mean that the particle actually breaks into two pieces again another question was that what is the meaning of change of k in the two regions above and what we can conclude here about the state of the particle the the, uh, the thing is that in the uh, at x is equal to zero we have a step uh, we have a step uh, step jump of the potential that is the v zero and and this actually de derives from a um, derives, uh, it can be derived from a force that is the step fo um, that is the delta function force and and for this delta function force the momentum of the particle get reduced because you can see here k1 uh, k1 is greater than k2 uh, and k1 k and the momentum of a particle is actually given by h cut k and as this uh, and as this k1 and uh, k1 is greater than k2 we can say for the uh, for the applied force the momentum of the particle and the imp applied impulsive force the momentum of the particle reduced uh, reduced from h cut k1 to h cut k2 and this was the end of the first question uh, and from the topic quantum mechanics the second question they asked me to write down the momentum for vector and they also asked me what is the relation between energy and momentum vector in relativistic case and also uh, to prove this through the momentum for vector so uh, if we have a course on the special relativity then uh, it will be <coughs> it will be very much familiar to everyone that uh, the momentum force vector uh, can be uh, expressed like this that is uh, this vector have four components uh, so it is called the four vector and the first component of it is uh, given by i e y c where c is the uh, velocity of light in the vacuum and the other components are actually the moment, uh, the momentum vector components in x y and z direction respectively now the relation between energy and the momentum in relativistic case is given by e square is equal to p square c square plus m square c to the power 4 where where c is the velocity of light in vacuum uh, it is very well known <coughs> now we have to prove this uh, prove this relation through the momentum four vector so what are you gonna do we just have to take the inner product of this momentum four vector with it itself and as we know the uh, dot product of any two uh, two four vectors like the position four vector and the momentum four vector they are uh, actually Lorentz invariant quantities and they can be taken as constants so we will take uh, we will take the inner product of the momentum force vector with itself and we will equate the constant with minus mc square on that situation we will get uh, something like this and if we take the uh, and if we just do the inner product we will get the relation minus e square y c square plus p x square plus p y square plus p z square is equal to minus mc square and from that will be will be very much be able to show this <coughs> relation e square is equal to p square c square plus m square c to the power 4 uh, it was the second question um, there was a there was also a part question they asked me that was uh, what is the delta function and to give the uh, give the definition of it uh, in the integral form that is actually well known Min uh, integral minus infinity to plus infinity delta x dx is equal to 1 the third question they asked me was 
how different gases are stored in the cylinders or any other gas chambers or storage devices what is the importance of pressure and temperature in the process and use a proper graph to explain all those things <coughs> So first of all, we all know when a gas is stored in some gas chamber or any cylinder, they actually been liquidified before uh, before being stored. So uh, now the question is how we can liquidify a gas. Uh, to liquidify a gas, we first need to apply uh, a certain temper uh, a certain temperature on the gas like uh, like we have to uh, have to make the temperature of the gas uh, temperature of the gas below certain uh, below a certain temperature which is known as the critical temperature and after after doing that we have to give a specific pressure on the on the volume of the gas to make it liquid uh, to make it liquid liquid so this uh, this certain temperature below uh, below which the gas can be liquidified liquidified is known as the critical temperature and the pressure to be applied is known as the critical pressure so all these things can be easily visualized when we use a pv diagram of the uh, of the gas and show the phase change there so it looks like this one the graph is a pv graph and if we see only this portion of the graph then we can uh, then we can say that this portion of the graph actually uh, actually gives a proper uh, graph of the proper ideal gas that is pv is equal to constant but what about the uh, what, uh, what about the other parts why this uh, why this uh, almost parallel uh, almost parallel lines are uh, lines are shown in uh, shown in there because there is a phase change there okay uh, up to this point uh, after uh, whenever the temperature is below tc um, this means this region the gas become uh, gas comes into a vapor vapor state okay and after uh, and in this state if we uh, in this state if we apply some specific pressure this gas uh, this gas first turn, uh, this uh, this gas uh, tries to compress and uh, compressed and its volume goes down and after a certain volume which is known as the critical volume uh, this uh, there is a fa uh, there the phase change uh, starts occurring that is the gas starts to liquidify the pressure in these situations uh, for different temperature are different and this and this pressure is no pressure is equivalent to the vapor pressure at that instant <clears throat> in this vapor pressure the total phase change occurs and during the whole process the pressure remain unchanged for uh, for a specific temperature uh, temperature we can see this region okay this region uh, this uh, this region like the mountain here uh, here actually the uh, actual phase change occurs we can see there is no change in the f uh, change in the pressure the only change uh, only change occurs uh, occurs in the volume right uh, and uh, and when the whole th and when the whole volume of the gas uh, gas become liquidified the uh, a certain volume is obtained which is actually the liquid after that whenever we applied uh, applied more pressure the volume almost remain unchanged right we can see uh, we can see the parallel uh, parallel part of the graph uh, with the with the p axis that uh, that says the <coughs> the says the uh, the volume of the uh, the volume of the gas never changes after after liquidification that is it comes to a liquid it comes to the liquid phase uh, liquid phase and it uh, it completes the whole answer for the question